Mr. President, a lot going on in the Senate as we've been uh, debating and voting on a number of things, important matters, no doubt, for the country. But that doesn't mean that we're going to forget other important matters that we regularly take up here in the Senate. And what I'm talking about is, of course, the Alaskan of the week. Now, our pages are back, which is such great news, but you need to know this is one of the most exciting times in the Senate. Usually every Thursday, I get an opportunity to come down here on the Senate floor and talk about somebody in Alaska who's making a difference. Heck, we talked about a gold medal Olympic athlete just a couple weeks ago, making a huge difference for Alaska, her community, the world, America. So uh, we really enjoy this. It's kind of got a cult following, but the pages really enjoy because stories and adventure all through the people who are doing wonderful things in my state. This week, on the actual day of her retirement from a long and rewarding career with the Alaska State Troopers, our Alaskan of the week is Ann Sears. So before I talk about Ann and her extraordinary service to Alaska, about her being the first and only Alaska Native female trooper, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on back home. In Wasilla, Alaska, where Ann recently moved, she was actually born in Nome, we're gonna talk about that. The temperature has been in the mid 40s, 20s at night, sun rose today at 8 a.m., sets at 7.30 p.m. You know, it moves fast in Alaska. We've already had several pretty good sized snowstorms, so winter is coming. Winter is coming. Definitely coming to Alaska right now. But let's get back to Ann. After decades of hard work as an Alaska state trooper, it's time for Ann to settle into a new home, to rest, get some sleep, think about her next steps, all of which she's planning on doing starting tomorrow, because today she's retiring. So, Ann Sears, well, let's start with her mother, Gladys, who's from Nome. Gladys actually left Nome for a little bit of time, moved to the lower 48, and among other things, Gladys, Ann's mom, worked here in D.C. She worked for Alaska Congressman Ralph Rivers. Most people don't think we ever had any other congressman but Don Young, because he's been there forever, but this was... Alaska Congressman Ralph Rivers and Gladys, Ann's mom, met her husband, Carrie, Ann's father, who was an electrician in the Navy. But Carrie and Gladys decided to move back to Nome because they wanted to make sure Ann was going to be born in Nome, which she was. So Gladys obviously is a woman of ambition, and so was her daughter, Ann. She passed that down to Ann. So after Ann was born, and Carrie, her father, left the Navy, he got a job as an electrician with the Federal Aviation Administration in Alaska, which took him and his family all around the state. Bethel, Kotzebue, Unalakleet, so many great villages in our rural part of Alaska. <clears throat> now, eventually they settled in Juneau, and after high school, Ann got a job as a clerk for the Juneau Police Department. All through her younger years, she knew she wanted to do something to help people. But it wasn't until the tender age of 31 that her calling came. As the clerk at the Juneau Police Department, she decided, hey, I can do this. So she took the test required to become a police officer. Of course, a woman of this intelligence passed with flying colors and she was offered a job. On the first day of training, on the job training, Ann was in a police car speeding to a site where a woman was hurt. She got there, 
She helped that woman in her desire, motivation to be a police officer was cemented. She was hooked. She met her future husband, Jay, at the police academy, and eventually they became Alaska state troopers as a couple, both of them working in rural Alaska together where they'd worked for over 15 years. It didn't take Anne long to realize she was actually really good at her job. That's not being arrogant, she just knew Quote, I could talk to people, she said. Not being big and being a woman, you've got to use words in this job. Mr. President, anyone who has watched the reality show Alaska State Troopers, now there's a lot of Alaska reality shows, but anyone at home watching right now, if you've seen Alaska State Troopers, you will have seen Anne featured prominently in that series. And you will understand what she means when she talks about using her words. She's articulate, she's tough, she's firm, she's very clear, but she's also calming, which is what you need from a good officer. She's able to bring calm and ease to the most volatile situations, in situations that can be extraordinarily challenging for our law enforcement officers. Now, as some might have heard me talk about here on the floor, the hundreds of small rural villages and the hub communities of rural Alaska are literally the spiritual and cultural soul of my state. But like many areas across America, both urban and rural, rural Alaska also has many challenges. And one of them is that there is not enough public safety officer present in rural Alaska. We have dozens of communities with nothing, no sheriff, no police officer, no trooper, no VPSO, nothing. It's a big issue, it's something I'm certainly passionate about that we're all working on, more law enforcement presence in our rural communities. So being a law enforcement officer in rural Alaska, particularly in the hundreds of villages that don't have roads to get in and out of, can pose unique challenges. Anne has seen those challenges throughout her career. What are some of those? Well, first you have to get to the village, especially if it doesn't even have an officer in the village when there's a crime or a challenge. That often requires flying in a single engine plane to remote places in a giant state in tough weather. Then when you get there, you have to figure out where you need to go. Sometimes there's no facilities, no jail, no holding cell, no place to t take people maybe one city office at the most. And then you have to figure out how to get into those offices, which can be particularly challenging, particularly in the winter, when it's cold and dark and might be 50 below zero with the wind howling. So these are many, many of the challenges that Ann has dealt with. As she says, quote, this is not NCIS or law and order. In rural Alaska, we have to do it all. Indeed, as a trooper, she has played many roles, a protector, an enforcer, a trooper, a friend, a confidant, a social worker, and she loved it all and she was really good at it. Quote, here's what she said, quote, it was the best job I could ever had, I could ever have had, and the hardest job I could ever have had. But I couldn't have done it without my husband, Jay, my sons Hunter and Zachary and my brother Perry, she said. Ann also credits the health aides and public safety officers, VPSOs, VPOs in these villages who have really, really important roles. One of the most difficult aspects of her job 
was handling cases of domestic violence and sexual assault. Now, I love my state. We're a great state. I come down on the floor once a week and brag about it with our Alaska of the Week, but this is something we don't like to brag about in Alaska, the horrific problems we have with domestic violence, sexual assault, and uh, the challenges that brings, particularly with young people, too many people. But she has been very focused on these issues and teamed up with local health providers to go into high schools to give presentations about these horrible crimes and talk about why it's wrong, this kind of abuse, and to try to change the culture of our state, which we need to keep focused on. She had groups and gatherings for parents, too. She said mostly mothers would come and heartbreakingly, almost inevitably, tell stories some of the victims and survivors of abuse that we have in our state. But she was undeterred. She said, quote, if I could just touch one child on these kind of crimes to help them, I know I've made a difference. Ms. President, Anne has made a difference. I would say a huge difference for Alaska. Here's what fellow trooper Colonel Brian Barlow said about Ann's service. Quote, her legacy as a caring, compassionate, and dedicated trooper and investigator has without a doubt made our state, the great state of Alaska, a much safer place. James Cockrell, the commissioner of the Alaska Department of Public Safety, said that Ann's dedication to rural Alaska was an extraordinary asset to the department's mission to keep Alaskans safe. As I've said, Mr. President, Ann was the first female Alaska Native trooper, but I guarantee you she will not be the last. She has proved a role model for so many, a true trailblazer, an example that we need in Alaska and so many people look up to. Now, she hasn't decided what the future holds. She's still young and still has the urge to help out. I have no doubt she's gonna make big, a big impact in other places, helping Alaskans. For now, though, you can tell this is a tough job. I think she needs a little rest and some sleep. So thank you, Ann, for all you've done. Congratulations on your retirement today from the Alaska State Troopers. Thank you for being an inspiration, an example to so many in our great state. And of course, congratulations on being our Alaskan of the week. I yield the floor.